This is the only continent that has welcomed all civilizations. We started with the Arabs. They abused us. Then came the Portuguese. We welcomed them. They abused us. Then the Dutch came. We welcomed them. They abused us. Then the Italians came. We welcomed them. They abused us. Then the Germans came. We welcomed them. They abused us. Then the French came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Then the English came, we welcomed them and they abused us. Then the Indians came, we welcomed them and they abused us. Then the Lebanese came, we welcomed them, they abused us. Now the Chinese are coming, we are welcoming them and they are abusing us. We must stop this. And we can only stop this through self-realization. And that is why, when I, can co I conclude, I must conclude by making reference to a great African, Ante Chek Diop of Senegal, who writing in his book, The, human, the African Origin of Humankind, Myth or Reality, says, this is a problem that can only be solved through aggression. And I'm telling us, this is the time now for Africa to rise. Africa will be great. Africa must be great, and it will only be great if we choose to spiritually decolonize our minds, our hearts, and culture, because it is only then that Africa will be a great continent. God bless you. Greetings again, brothers and sisters and cousins of the other races who are supporting us or who will support us in our struggle for economic independence. Uh, Happy New Year to you and my hope, I'm hoping that you will have a healthy and profitable 2022. This is a Black Economic Network video number 16 and the highlight of this video is the issue of who killed Bob Marley. Um, that's the main highlight that we will deal with later in the video. Also, the another important item is how to grow an integrated business. And there are some other things that will come up in different segments, as you will see. But um, our main thing is to is to present to you, to show to you and present to you uh, the, this uh, thing that I, uh, someone sent to me about who killed Bob Marley. The introductory segment was by Professor Lumumba who is the, uh, a very eloquent and effective and um, consistent defender of African unity and Pan-Africanism Pan in Africa and in the diaspora. The 
next segment is about the new uh, Black Wall Street. Sister Pat from Atlanta sent this video clip to me uh, that I will show you in a minute. Okay. Our community, y'all. We went to this awesome bookstore. We had to, of course, pick up some books for our little one. We have that hair love book, but I got this Baby Goes to Market book, as well as I Am Brown, all black authors. Even the bar that they have there, all of the liquor, all of the spirits, everything is black owned, black created. So, I mean, it was just incredible to be able to be a part of the experience of keeping the money in our community, to be part of this space where we felt completely comfortable and just enjoyed. <laughs> this was an awesome hot sauce stand and they were really cool there. These were fresh juices made by this beautiful woman um, and sharing the benefits of each of the juices. This was another artist that we got to see doing their beautiful art. They have a tea room there. They have a museum there. It was an amazing experience. You have to check it out. Suddenly you left me alone by myself. The next segment is about the integrated business model. The video, as you will see, is about uh, some guy farm integrated farm model however and this was sent to me by a brother in in in, in trinidad he sent both the imf uh clip and the sangai sangai uh video with brother ozzy t from trinidad he sent them to me and although the sangai farm it is about the Songhai farm model this this model of development uh, can be used in almost any kind of small or even large business uh, for example if it's the construction although it's a, this one about farming so i'm not going to say about farming but if it's construction the similar approach if you're building houses then um, it can be integrated with the building of the making of the blocks to build the houses and um, the mining of the the sand and other inputs. So uh, here is the video. Cooling on a couch, watching TV, go up to the Nothing else to do about it. Walk to the board and drop something brand new. Feeling on the dice, throwing shit down. Making me hot to the sound. About to stop. Hungry that I'm up for the puck now. Cause I found out you like it. Would you want it back? Would you want it, want it back? Would you want it? Continent in the world is the poorest. Something is wrong. So we created this place to give Africans an environment, a space where they look at themselves seriously. Songhai is where Africans can learn how to grow up. I'm Father Godfrey Zabjo. I'm the director and founder of the Songhai Movement. Songa is a new African society, a laboratory, where we can show that Africa can do it by harnessing all the resources, both human resource, 
environmental resources to create a new world here. But the beginning, the take-off point is agriculture. But that agriculture must be sustainable to produce better and more with less. We have agriculture, that crop production, we have animal and fish. The waste from one section is recycled to become input in another one. For example, the water here you see is rich with fish. The wastewater, instead of throwing it away, is now rich to water, irrigate our crops. So we're not buying anything. The animal wastes are recycled through bacteria to fertilize our soil. Nothing is wasted. The waste from the animal, from the fish, used to produce energy. This new agriculture is going to bring a new habitat. You work where you live, you live where you work, you eat what you produce, and in producing in a way that enhances the environment, everything goes. When I came here about 30 something years ago, it was desert, nothing at all. The land was dead. But look at what you see now. So these are the places where we market our primary and secondary products. These are the industrial products here from our industry. This is now from our primary directory from over there. So this is what we're doing here. We are exporting wealth and importing poverty. This is not acceptable. Start this logic of development. Abandon the logic of dependency. And this is what we're doing today. segment, the highlight of this video, number 16, who killed Bob Marley, I, I have heard for a long time that somebody or, or some organization or, uh, tried, uh, killed him. I know about the attempt on his life and we know uh, people in Jamaica are familiar with Jamaican politics and what goes on in Jamaica, we know about the attempt on his life. But it's actually death, it's actual death. I, most people, including myself, uh, thought that it was just, he died naturally, got sick with cancer, uh, starting on his, on his, his, his toe, toe or toes or a toe, and it spread to the rest of his body. But um, I got this article from a, a, a good friend in, in, in Jamaica. I am not going to call his name. He doesn't want me to, to mention him, his name. And uh, he sent me this article and I read it. And um, I am not going to say much about it. When you, you hear the content of the article, then you can make up your mind. But if you don't, if you're not familiar with Bob Marley's life and the and his death then you'll probably need to find out something more about it but this article i will read the article or most of it because the it, people who are going to watch this channel on on their their cell phone the art the, the type the text is so small that i know you won't be able to read it on your your um, cell phone. So I will read most of the article and um, you can conclude 
from it whether or not you you believe it okay The title is I Killed Bob Marley, CIA Agent Confesses on His Deathbed. A 79-year-old retired officer of the CIA, Bill Oxley, has made a series of stunning confessions since he was admitted to the Mercy Hospital in Maine. On Monday, after being told he has weeks to live, he claims he committed 17 ass assassinations for the American government between 1974 and 1985, including the music icon Bob Marley. Mr. Oxley, who worked for the CIA for 29 years, as an operative with a top-level security clearance, claims he was often used as a you a human uh, sorry as a hitman by the organization to assassinate individuals who could represent a threat to the goals of the agency. Trained as a sniper and marksman, Mr. Oxley also has significant experience with more unconventional met methods of inflicting harm upon others like poison, explosive, induced heart attack, and cancer. The 79-year-old operative claims he committed the assassination assassinations between March 1974 and August 1985, at a time when he says the CIA was uh, it was a law unto itself. He says he was part an, of an operative cell of three members which carried out political assassinations across the country and occasionally in foreign countries. Most of their victims were political activists, journalists, and union leaders, but also confesses to assassinate a few scientists, medical researchers, artists, and musicians whose ideas and influence represented a threat to the interests of the United States. He said, he had no problems with going through the assassination of Bob Marley because I was a patriot, uh, quote. I believed in the CIA and I didn't question the motivation of the agency. I always understood that sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. But Mr. Oxley confessed that Bob Marley remains unique among his victims as he was the only victim he felt anything for. The others were asshole, assholes. Bob Marley was Bob Marley. I was no closer to being a long-haired hippie back then than I am now. But I must admit that Bob's music did move me. It held some power over me. He claims to have mixed feelings about Bob Marley, Bob Marley's assassination um, because
So it's a long article, as you will see, so I'm going to skip some parts of it. But he, he went on to say that Bob Marley was also placing the goals of the CIA in jeopardy and threatening the existence of the United States. He was succeeding in, create, succeeding in creating a revolution that used music as a more powerful tool than bullets and bombs. Bob Marley in 1976 was a very serious threat to the global status quo and to the hidden powers, power brokers implementing their plans for a new world order. He continued, it is not like we didn't, didn't, didn't warn him. We sent a few guys to shoot up his house in Kingston. Mr. Oxley says, referring to a shooting in the Bob Marley residence that left the singer with an, in, an injured uh, arm and chess. We had a message uh, for him. We impressed upon him the gravity of the situation he found himself in. He didn't listen. Two days later, in the mountains, I stuck him with the pin. So he, he goes on to explain how Bob Marley how he murdered Bob Marley. How Bob Marley was murdered by the CIA. Two days after Bob Marley was shot in the left arm by one of three gunmen who ambushed him and some of his crew uh, Bob Marley and some of his crews went to the hills to a house in the Blue Mountains. Yes, hills of the Blue Mountain and spent time at the highest point in Jamaica rehearsing for an upcoming concert. According to Mr. Oxley, he used press credentials to gain access to Bob Marley during his Blue Mountain retreat. He introduced himself as a famous photographer working for the New York Times and gave Bob Marley a gift. gift. I gave him a pair of, uh, it seems like a, 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 a pair of sneakers. I'm not going to call the name of the brand. When he tried on the right shoe, he screamed out, ouch, that was it. His life was over right there and then. The nail in the shoe was tainted with cancer, virus, and bacteria. If it pierced his skin, which it did, he it was good night, of course. I'm going to stop there because the uh, rest of it is just more details, pretty much about the same thing. Uh, we, we know that Bob Marley died from cancer uh, that they said spread from his a toe one of his toes uh, and I and it would seem from this article that what this man is saying is he's explaining how 
that cancer uh, started. Finally, I want to say thanks again for your support and keep watching the videos and I will see you next week. Keep healthy. Uh, health is better than wealth, but wealth, of course, wealth is also important. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.